has. See, when I was a little boy, I had no idea what alcoholism was, and I thought beer was normal, but I saw my mom cry about it. I watched my mom's heart break over it. I watched my parents divorce because of it. And if you're anything like me, I remember like it was yesterday being this big, laying in my bed, listening to my parents fight. And if you're anything like me, I remember laying in that bed as a little boy crying at night and saying to myself, I promise, man. that promise when I was 14 years old when I started drinking my daddy's Miller Lights. All those nights crying because of that beer can. My mom and dad getting divorced because of it. And now I walk around my high school like I'm cool because I can drink the beer that broke my mother's heart. That must make me so cool, man. That must make me so tough. There's nothing cool about that, man. That's a whole lot of sadness. And having no idea what to do with it. years ago six years ago and I would have came up with the ugliest most horrifying story but see after doing this for so many years the bottom has become different see the first day just like some of you I grabbed a couple of beers out of my father's fridge just like some of you I stuffed them in my pockets and I ran out of my house and just like some of you I had a friend with me and together, we decided to drink them. And once we did, we finished them. Once we finished them, we dug a little hole behind my garage and we buried them. As soon as I got done drinking my dad's beer, I ran around my garage to go pick up my basketball to shoot in the driveway. And my mom was standing there. She shocked me because she came home from work early. She called me over to give her a hug. For the first time in my life, I ran away from my mother. I didn't want my mom smelling my father's booze on our little boy's breath. No way, man. Do you know how many nights my mom had to fall asleep to that smell? How many mornings she woke up to it? And now, she's going to smell it on me? See, for me, that's the beginning of the bottom. That's where my story began. That's the first day that nobody wants to talk about. See, because just like some of you, I remember Fridays and Saturdays, but what I remember most in high school about those nights was not the drinking and the smoking. It was the end of the night when it was time to go home, so the anxiety would kick in, stress would come out, Visine would go in, gum. I'd spray my clothes, I'd wash my hands, I'd splash my face. See, when I was your age, I always covered up my mistakes. See, I covered up my mistakes because my mom believed in me. My mom was my biggest fan. And I'm not ready to let my mother down yet. I don't want to break her heart. So at the end of the night, as I'm covering up my mistakes, I would always look across the room and see my friends in high school that never drank and that never smoked. 
who got laughed at and made fun of, peer pressured, often not invited, sometimes outcast. But at the end of the night, I would always look across the room and I would see those kids sitting there with their water in their hand. And I would say to myself, we can laugh at them, we can put pressure on them, but real talk, those kids have something special I'm missing, man. You know, I'm 15, 16 years old spending my mother's money on drugs. They don't have to. Every Friday and Saturday night, I'm covering up my mistakes. They don't have a need to. Yet we laugh and make fun of those kids. Maybe the joke's on me. I knew deep down inside, I knew with all my heart that those kids had something special. I just had no idea how they got it. Because I will tell you this right now, there was never a night. There was never a night for me when I got past my mother after covering up my mistakes like some of you. There was never a night that I ran up to my room, closed the door, looked in the mirror and said, I'm so proud of you, man. And if you can honestly sit in your seat right now and think of the friend that you grew up with, who grew up just like you, who went to the same schools as you, the kid that doesn't drink and that doesn't smoke, you never walk down the hallway, see them, and you never say to yourself, how come? How come they've never had to do the stuff that I've done? We grew up on the same street, yet she's okay and I'm not. She's the same kid I remember in middle school. And I am completely different. You never go home now, sit at the table with your grandmother, look your mom in the eye, and there's not a part of you that says, I'm only 16 years old and they don't even know me anymore. All they've done for me and they don't even know the real me. I'm a ne In their eyes. They brag about you. They talk to their friends about you. They listen to the music you listen to. They want to dress like you when they get older. Your little brother, your little sister want to follow in your footsteps. So sit in your seat right now in these bleachers and ask yourself one question. The kid you are today Do you really want your little brother to be like you? You want him smoking how you smoke? You want him to drink how you drink? Do you really want your little sister doing what you do? That's what you want for that little girl, man? To try what you're trying right now? to hang out with people like you hang out with, that's what you want for that little kid. You want that little boy to pretend like you? See, I talk about little brothers and sisters because I spoke at a school. 
And during my presentation, four eighth grade boys walked out crying. After my presentation, I met with them. One little boy said, I wish you came here five days ago. Five days ago, two of our best friends walked home from school to play Xbox. The house they went to was an eighth grade boys. A seventh grade boy followed. They chose the eighth grade boys because he had an older brother and sister in high school. They never come home after they get high and drink with their friends. When they got to the house, the eighth grade boy convinced the 13 year old boy that it's fun to take pills when you play Xbox. He followed the eighth grade boy up to the bathroom. They grabbed a couple of pills. Both boys swallowed them. They ran back downstairs laughing and joking like they got away with it. 30 minutes later, the seventh grade boy got real sick. His little stomach, he couldn't handle it. So he started throwing up everywhere. He was panicking. He wanted to call 911, but he didn't want to get in trouble. So he held off. 30 minutes later, he had nothing left to give. So he started to calm down. Eighth grade boy helped him, cleaned him up, got him a drink, and walked him halfway home. At the halfway point, they went separate ways. Before they did, they made a promise to each other they'd never talk about it again. He'll regret it for the rest of his life. Because at 7 o'clock at night, when mom came in from work, all the brother and sister know where to be found. Xbox was on, so she went in to shut it off. When she opened the bedroom, the boy was in bed. She was going to get him up for dinner and homework. When she walked up to him, she realized he was dead in bed. He died at 14 years old trying to be like his big sister. All he wanted to do was take what she took. All he wanted to do was be like his big brother. And he lost his life because of it. That's a hard casket to carry, man. Are you really the big brother, big sister your little one needs? The saddest thing about that is every auditorium I say it, I watch kids cry. I watch kids shake their head. Like, I do not want my little sister to be like me. Then why in the world would you do it to yourself? If you don't want your little sister doing it, why are you? If it's the last thing in the world you want your little brother to try, then why are you trying it? Oh, don't get it twisted. Every time you take one, there's a chance you're not coming back from it. Trust me, I know a bunch of them who never came through. And the saddest thing is, is that the culture that kids are growing up in today, popping pills, zannies, and mollies, it's like, it's like a song. It's not a song, man, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. To spend your family's money on something that kills you. There's a lot of kids in here that have been touched by this. And there's a lot of kids you don't even know how much they've been affected by it. So be careful how you act and how you present around it because there's kids in here whose heart is broken because of it. I just spoke in Ohio where there was a little girl sitting in the freshman section. And during my Q&A, first question came from the freshman section. And I was so proud of this little girl, right? She had blonde hair, little polo shirt, jeans, shell toe sneakers on. She popped up like she was ready to go. As soon as the principal walked the microphone to her, she grabbed it, she started shaking. When she started shaking, kids started laughing. After the kids started laughing, she got nervous, so she ran out. They started clapping. After my assembly, the principal pulled me aside. He said, listen, just a little background on that little girl. Her father's been out of the picture for 10 years because of drugs. Her mother just got sentenced to 14 years in prison. See, she was sentenced to prison because her mom was addicted 
to Percocets and Xanax. She didn't go to jail because of the drugs. She went to prison for 14 years because she started selling that little girl on the internet when she was nine. Nine years old, that little girl had to go to motel rooms for Xanax. And yet there's kids in here that will laugh about pills. There's kids in here right now that take pills. There's kids in here right now that you're friends with that are popping pills and you laugh and joke like it's no big deal. I promise you that little girl could walk into this high school today, walk amongst you and you would never ever know. But if she sat amongst you and watched you laugh about it like they're a joke, she'd run out crying because she was sold for them. Funny, pills are funny. Little girls get sold for them and it's a joke. We laugh about them like they're no big deal. Because if it's no big deal, how about this? If it's no big deal, most of us have grandparents in here who we absolutely adore and respect. Go to their house after school, sit down with your grandmother, let her make you a sandwich and tell her everything you've been up to. And try to explain to her that it's normal and it's no big deal. Watch your grandmother's heart break right before your eyes. Tell your mom and dad who you really are. And watch how shocked they'll be. If it's no big deal. Because if it doesn't matter to you, it matters to somebody who loves you, man. It matters to someone who loves you. Make. See, you cut ties with that friend. You no longer talk or support them. Because they won't make the same mistakes you make. They don't want to risk what you're risking. They don't want to let mom and dad down. You've already sacrificed for drugs and alcohol in your life. You cut an amazing, caring, loving, loyal friend out of your life because they won't do them with you. See, there's kids in here right now sitting with each other, but bring nothing to one another's life. As a matter of fact, what you bring is just negativity. You're hanging out with kids that make you worse, man. You're hanging out with kids that add no value to your life that could care less about your mom and dad. And they could care less about your little brother and sister. Surround yourself with friends. When they see you slipping, they pick you up and think about your mom and dad. Anybody can smoke blunts. Anybody can drink in basements. Not everybody can walk away though. Not everybody can go home, look mom and dad in the eye and say, I am the same kid I was in middle school. Not everybody can do that, man. I know I couldn't. I didn't have that type of courage. I have so much admiration for the kids who can walk into this gym on a Friday night and clap for their fellow classmates. I have so much admiration for the kids who can go to homecoming, prom, and football games and not need to get a buzz on to walk in. That takes courage. That's guts. Being you is enough. And that's an amazing strength to have. I wish I'd passed down to the kids when I was in high school that what was cool 
was not to pretend to be someone else. Cool as kids who can just step in and handle it, can dance and not need it, go through that roller coaster of high school and survive it. That's cool. Because my question is pretty simple. If you're so happy, if you're so confident, why in the world are you doing drugs? To the kids that don't have to, I applaud you. To the kids that do, I understand you. There's nothing weird about the both of you. Help one another. Look out for each other. I don't care what anybody says. High school's hard, man. High school is not easy. Unfortunately, parents want to tell you that it's the best four years of your life. For real? 14 to 18? High school's hard. And there's kids in here that battle with self-esteem. There's kids in here right now that don't feel good enough, pretty enough, or have enough. And you can laugh and play it off like it's not a big deal, but that's hard to live with. I've been sober for almost nine years. There has not been one day I woke up wanting to smoke a drink, take a pill, or shoot dope, except, except the days I just don't feel good being me. It's been that from day one. The battle's always been right here. Drugs and alcohol came second. Not being me. It always came first. See, everybody thinks this talk is about drugs and alcohol. It's way bigger than that. This is about struggle. And every kid in here knows a little bit about it. Some more than others. Not everybody has the luxury of walking out of this assembly today and going home, sitting down with a family member and explaining to them what's going on. But every single one of you in this auditorium right now has a teacher, an administrator, or a coach on this property that will do anything to help you if they only got to know you. See, right now, they only know the kid you pretend to be. They don't know the real you yet. See, what they know is the act that you're putting on not what's inside of you. There's kids in here pretending. I pretended to. See, I walk in here because I wish I walked out of this assembly. I wish I walked out of this assembly I wish I walked behind that curtain, grabbed the coach, talked to a teacher for a minute, looked them in the eye and said, I don't want to pretend anymore, man. I'm tired of acting like everything's cool when I know it's not. There's kids in here right now who know that feeling. There's kids in this gym right now that are struggling. And I pray that one of you get off the bleachers, 
one of you get up from your seat and on your way back to class, one of you? One of you say to yourself, without a doubt, I should be better than I am right now, man. I'm not proud of the kid I'm becoming. I'm not comfortable with the mistakes I'm making. That's not who I am. That's not the person I want to be. Anytime a kid opens his mouth to share something, it takes guts. And for as much as I struggled in my life, I truly believe that struggle ended the day I started talking about it. This assembly is not easy and it shouldn't be. This assembly is about you, not me. Anybody can walk in here and show you a 30 minute movie and tell you their life story. I want you to forget my story and think of yours.